Next example, Donovan is estimating the height of the second floor in the mall. He cites the second floor at a 10 degree angle of elevation. Notice that's what we have right here. And with our 10 degrees. And he steps forward 50 feet. So he's going to walk forward 50 feet until he's five and a half feet away from the wall. And he cites the second floor again. And his light of sight is 66 inches above the ground. At what angle of elevation does he cite the second floor? Now, if I look, I'm trying to find Y here, aren't I? But the problem is I have two unknowns. I have Y and X. That's not going to help me. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the big triangle first. And I know I want to find X, the height that's above his eyes. And I want, and I know 10 degrees, so opposite. And I know the whole thing is 55.5. So opposite, adjacent, I'm going to say the tangent of 10 degrees equals the opposite, which is X, over 55.5. Well, to solve for X, we multiply both sides by 55.5. So then X is 55.5 times the tangent of 10 degrees. So let's use our calculator to find that out here. Whoops, I closed the wrong one, but that's okay. So we're going to say 55.5 times the tangent of 10. And I get 9.78. Let's open that up again. So X is 9.78, in this case feet, above Donovan's head. Now I can use that to find y. I'm still going to use my tangent function because I'm still looking at the opposite side and the adjacent side. But now I want to say the tangent of y equals the opposite, which is x, or 9.78 over my adjacent, which is 5.5. In other words, the measure of angle Y is going to be the inverse tangent of 9.78 over 5.5. So I can find the measure of angle Y Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to say the inverse tangent of 9.78, which is my answer, isn't it? And I'm going to divide that by 5.5. I'm going to double check I had 5.5 in there because I'm absent-minded. Yes, 5.5. So then the angle... It's about 61 degrees, isn't it? So he goes from looking up at 10 degrees to looking up at 61 degrees. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. As you walk towards something, you have to tilt your head higher and higher to keep your object right on that, on that object. So, yes, 61 degrees is reasonable for this question. Next, let's take a look at this triangle here. And in this triangle, I want to find the area. Well, the area of a triangle, remember, is one half times base times height. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop in my height. This is h. And I'm going to use my trig functions to come up with an expression for h. Now, in relation to angle A, notice H is opposite, C is my hypotenuse. Opposite hypotenuse is going to be sine. So we're going to say the sine, 
Let me make this a little bit thicker here. Oh, it is thick. What did I do? Well, we'll find out here. So, whoa, yeah, that's way too thick. I pressed on it. Okay, come on you. Bring that down here. Okay, so I'm going to say the sine of angle A is the opposite, which is H, over C. To solve for H, I'm going to multiply both sides by C. So H is C sine A. So when I do my area here, I'm going to say, instead of writing H, I'm going to write, say C sine A. So I'm going to say 1 half times B. Instead of writing H, I'm going to say C sine A. And that's how that always works out. I could have dropped my, I could have used angle C, and then it would one half AB sine C. I could have actually used angle B, and it'd be one half AC sine B. But this is the formula for the area of any triangle, whether it's right or not. So we made it a right triangle.